League, you're thinking it's going to be about a dog or a cat, but Alan from the AWL has just called me because he's worried about a small horse with a lump on the side of its face. Chris has been called to the Animal Welfare League in West Hoxton, outside of Sydney. Oh, boys. Shelter manager Alan oh, Norris is caring for two surrendered miniature horses. How are you going? Hi. Alan, is it? Yeah. yeah. Chris, how are you? How are you? Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Using the bucket to offset the arrival of the vet, are you? <laughs> yeah, I'll keep him nice and close. Hey, guys, how are you? One of the horses is in need of serious veterinary attention. So which one's Charlie? Uh, Charlie's a little white one there. Yeah. And this is Magic Mike. How did you end up having Charlie here? A pair of these coming together from a, an inspector seizure where someone couldn't care for him, and he's got a, a, a number of issues ongoing. We called Chris in today because Charlie has difficulty eating and he has a, a large lump on the left-hand side of his mouth. Thank you. Hey, Charlie. Hey, buddy. There are a few problems there. I, mean, I can see the feet straight away. So was Charlie essentially a, a cruelty case? Is that why he was, he was brought in? Charlie's more like a neglect case. He was left in a paddock. Um, the grass was quite long, so no one was monitoring his feet. So that's the reason he was picked up and brought to the Animal Welfare League by the inspectorate. It's going to be a tough time, though. Yeah, he's been treated by a farrier for the feet, so yeah. the feet aren't the issue at the moment. At the moment, we've got um, something going on with his teeth. Yeah. While the hooves are hard to ignore, the real reason why I am here is also pretty obvious. You look at his mouth, and he does have a big swelling on that left-hand side, and apparently he's also having trouble eating. We noticed why he was dropping food at the corner of his mouth instead of maintaining it, mm. and then this, this lump appeared. Charlie's years of neglect have made him difficult to approach in the open. Oh, the best chance is to get him in the stable. Yeah. He's, quite, he's quite comfortable in the stable. Yeah. It's OK. It's all right. It's OK. The two rescue horses are inseparable. Easy, guys. Good boys. We're good. Chris will have to win over the dominant Magic Mike before he can get close to Charlie. It's OK. Magic Mike runs the show. He may only be a bit over two foot tall, but He's the boss. It's OK. It's OK. You see that open door there? Mm -hmm. Looks good, doesn't it? Hey, it's OK. It's all right, guys. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's all right. They're going to settle down, they'll go straight through. Eventually, the skittish horses seem to be calming down. That is the ticket right there. Really? Shall we try again? Boy, it's low. Yeah. I'm used to this being underwater. At a small river 240 kilometres southwest of the Australian Reptile Park, General Manager Tim Faulkner and three of the park keepers are on a very important mission. This little river is home to a great population of platypus, and we come here to monitor that population, make sure it's healthy. A harsh drought has caused the river level to drop to an all-time low. To understand how the little Aussies are coping with the dry conditions, Tim and the boys have no choice but to get wet. There is nothing easy about catching platypus. They swim under the water, they're nocturnal. We've got to set a net across the river. Now that in itself is tricky because we need to find where there's no snags, find a perfectly straight run, a deep hole of water, wait for it to get dark and the platypus are going to swim in. And just keep your eyes on the water, boys. That's it. You might get a little bit dry, hey? Catching a platypus is an extremely dangerous job. Platypus are venomous. They have spurs on their back legs on the inner thigh. Now, what happens when that gets put into a human is that is one of the most painful stings on Earth. There is no known pain treatment. People in hospital actually ask for their hands to be cut off. It can last for days, weeks or months. Adding to the pressure, it's the first plat catch for Tim's three rookies, Mike, Andrew and Mick. 
In all honesty, I've got no idea what's going to happen tonight. Uh, you know, Tim's been here many times before, and uh, the, us three newbies will definitely be uh, taking direction from him and uh, trying to ensure that we do everything right. Even though they don't expect to catch the nocturnal mammal until later, the boys are on alert. All we can do now is just wait, and we never take our eyes off that net. The danger is that if a plaque gets in there and we're not looking, it'll drown underwater. We will not let that happen. Hey, guys. Hey, slow down. Come slow on. down. Such a hurry. Come on. So new and exciting. I know. <laughs> oh, they're having fun. At the animal welfare shelter, Chris and Alan are attempting to corral wary rescue horses Charlie and his pal Magic Mike. It's OK. It's OK. Charlie has a problem inside his mouth that requires urgent attention. I think they've been together for quite a long time, uh, maybe neglected and haven't had a great deal of interaction with people. So any of that interaction, Magic Mike comes in to, to protect him. Just stand still. Easy, guys. OK, comes Mike. Well done. See? And you get your food. Good boys. He's actually OK now. Yeah. He's, and now that he's... You can can you see the swelling on the side there? Yeah. We're walking outside where there's a bit more light where we can actually have sure. a good look at that. Good boy. Come in. Good job. Slowly does it, mate. There we go. Good boy. Well, I'm hoping Chris can get to the bottom of what this swelling is. Whether it's a quick fix or it's a major job, we don't know. We just need to make sure we can make him more comfortable eating and, and maintain his health. And out in the light now, you can really see this swelling here. To see a swelling that big in the side of a horse's mouth, you'd immediately think something like an abscess. Feeling around it though, it's soft and you can push your finger into it, which doesn't really make sense. What I'm gonna have to do here is open up his mouth and get right in there and have a look. I'm really just looking for any areas that are gonna be sore. Finally, I get a good chance to actually have a look inside Charlie's mouth and not surprisingly, he's not happy about it. The moment I get his mouth wide open and feel with my own fingers, I can sense something that shouldn't be there. So what's really interesting is that this side is fine. When I put my fingers inside his mouth there, there's no discomfort there at all. In fact, he doesn't mind it. Go to this side though, and all of a sudden, my fingers hit sharp points. He starts to pull away. Yeah because basically these teeth over here have worn in an uneven way. They've produced sharp points, and these sharp points are actually starting to stick into his gums. Feeling these sharp points, they hurt my fingers. You can only imagine what they're doing to the inside of his gums. So that really explains why he's dropping his food and why he's having difficulty eating. He's gonna need an equine dentist to come in and smooth off these teeth so they're no longer sticking into the side of his mouth. Because if nothing's done, he's gonna get more swelling, he's gonna get more pain, he's gonna get more infection. Feeling how sharp these teeth are, they must be a huge source of pain for Charlie. Every day, eating must be a nightmare. They need to be sorted out right now. feeling good at all. It's OK. It's all right, you know. Little Jack Russell Pup Scout has been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash after becoming ill and collapsing at home. This little dog's only three months old. He's been wobbly in his back legs. He's groaning. He's had some vomiting. I'm really worried that he's got a tick. It was devoted dog sitter Kathleen who brought Scout in, convinced he's suffering from tick paralysis. We're looking after these two puppies, uh, Scout and Bella, and um, we got home and uh, there was clearly something wrong with uh, Scout. So we phoned Sash, um, we rushed over here, and uh, they're busy looking after him at the moment, so we'll see what they're going to say. Okay. Something is seriously wrong here. His voice is paralysed and he's really swollen around his mouth. Hey, buddy. I don't like how you're making that noise. It appears that poison from a tick has already begun shutting down Little Scout's system. 
It's now a race against time to find the tick before it begins paralysing his breathing muscles. Where is the tick? Where is your tick, buddy? Every minute that we wait, it's injecting a lethal toxin into his system, causing this paralysis. We need to get it out of him and treat him as soon as we can. OK. Oh, here it is. All right, buddy, we found it now. That's OK. It's right around his lip. There we go. Oh, sweetheart. So we've taken the tick off Scout, but the treatment is nowhere near over yet. Now we need to sedate him, keep him as calm as possible, give him some life-saving tick anti-serum and hope like hell that he doesn't deteriorate. Hey Gary. Good, thanks mate. How are you doing? Good to see you, buddy. Long time no see. Mate, thanks for this. Not at all. He's going to appreciate it. Chris has called equine dentist Gary Lay to join him at the animal welfare shelter to work on Charlie's tea. So, we think he's about 20. OK. And I can just feel some discomfort on that uh, near side. Yep. And so, I'd love for you to have a look and just see with your gear what's actually going on at the back there. OK. I've called Gary in because he's a genius when it comes to horse teeth. It's like he's barely being rubbed. It's all right, it's all right. It's all right, it's all right. The key with Charlie right now is just to be very gentle, very calm, and a sedation will also help. You like a bit of the old neck massage, don't you? Good boy. Here we go, his head's dropping a bit. It's more like it, isn't it? Much more manageable. Yeah. The issue you're always battling with a horse's mouth is just a lack of space. And with Charlie, it's even more so. Open up down there. Dramatic set of braces. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. All right. So by putting him in, first of all, a dental gag and then a bit of a harness, you can actually open up that space and also get the best angle to have a good look inside there. It's dramatic, but uh, it should work. This is the area I was worried about. Just up alongside there. Yeah. Now, I reckon I can see those sharp points that I was, I was feeling. So you can see on the mirror there, he's got ulcerations on the side of his cheek. Yeah. So he's just not wearing those teeth in no. a normal way. No, yeah. And Which is a common problem with these guys, isn't it? Yeah. Their teeth are really too big for their head. Yeah, yeah, they're bred to have smaller heads, unfortunately. Yeah. But you can have a look here, how sharp that is. So that's just going to dig into the side of his cheek, but every time he chews, no, he wasn't giving too much away, just, just a little bit of soreness, a bit of food impaction, yeah. And, yeah. and just you can just feel those, those sharp points. Yeah. So he's got hooks, he's got sharp points, he's got uneven wear, and yeah. he's got ulcers. Yeah. But for a small mouth, he's got a lot going on, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I can finally see what's happening. It's quite dramatic. At Sash, the poison from a deadly paralysis tick is shutting down Little Scout's system. It's okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. The worst is done. It's now a race against the clock to get the tick antiserum into him before he is completely paralysed. We are under the pump here. We've got to get this into him really quickly because if we delay it any longer, he can get worse and fast. It's all right. Hold on. Scout's had his tick anti-serum and next we need to shave off all his hair to make sure that there are no other ticks hiding there and then we'll give him a spray with a tick treatment just to be safe. Okay. He's a brave puppy, you're all right. Good boy. Sorry, Scouter, we've just got to make sure you've got no ticks left. I know you're sick of it, you're being very patient. Just got to make sure we've got them all so you're not going to get any more sick. Suddenly, the nurses discover two more ticks burrowed deep within Scout's skin. It looks like a baby tick. Just right there on his belly. Oh, sweetheart. The poison from one paralysis tick is enough to kill this tiny puppy. With three ticks, Scout is now in serious trouble. Scout is really anxious and distressed. The most important thing I can do now is to date him, keep him as calm as possible, because if he stresses out and panics, he's at risk of aspirating, obstructing, and that is life-threatening. Devoted dog sitter Kathleen and her three children 
are allowed in to see the sick pup. I feel really sorry for Kathleen. I can't guarantee 100% that he's going to survive. He could deteriorate in the next 24 to 48 hours. And all I can do is hope that it doesn't happen. Sharp points, he's got uneven wear, and yeah. he's got ulcers. Yeah. But for a small mouth, he's got a lot going on, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Is it a filing that we need to do there? Yeah, yeah. We'll get the power flowed out, and we'll, we'll take that down. At the Animal Welfare League shelter in West Hoxton, Chris and equine dentist Gary Lay have a radical technique to tackle Charlie's dangerously sharp teeth. Good boy. Charlie's teeth are so big, power tools are the only things tough enough for the job. Very little room in his mouth. In years gone by, this job had to be done with steel files. They were cumbersome, they were tricky, and they always ran the risk of actually digging into the horse's mouth and causing pain. Using this equipment, it's a whole lot better. Just work your way down. You're doing pretty well there. That's just bit by bit, that's the most you want. Yeah. Probably take it down about one to two mils maximum there. Really, if there's one problem with a file like this, it's the fact that it's so effective and so efficient, you can actually file down too much of the horse's tooth and also cause heat to build up, which can actually burn the tooth. So you have to go slowly, but be measured in what you do. All right. I'm pretty happy with that, mate. Let's have a look, eh? That's the offending tooth there. Yeah. So you've taken that very nicely. Be much more comfortable now. Much nicer on his soft tissue in his mouth. You know, his tongue's not going to be in pain. His cheeks aren't going to be getting pinched and scraped. Even though Charlie's not coming out of this with a bright white smile, the result is actually fantastic. We've managed to remove all those sharp points. Given a few days' time, that mouth will heal up beautifully and he'll be eating perfectly. He's been a good little boy. He has, actually. You bravely kept your eyes shut for most of it. Mm -hmm. You've yeah, been good, though, mate. You've been very good. With the dental procedure out of the way, it's time to remove the harness and test out Charlie's smooth teeth. End result, perfect. Very happy with the end result. He'll be a much, much happier little pony now. It's early stages, but you can see that he's already starting to have a bit of a think about food. We're feeling a lot better very soon. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, he's already been through so much in his life that hopefully this will be just a small hurdle for him. It's fantastic. So maybe Charlie's going to get his head around eating a lot quicker than we thought. His head's in the bucket and he couldn't be happier. He's going to take a few days to get faith back in those, those teeth of his and, and know that it's not going to hurt him to eat. But I reckon within a little while, he's going to be wanting to eat as much as Magic Mike does. Thank you very much. Okay. No worries. Thank you. We just gotta wait, they'll turn up. Yeah. At a small river west of Sydney, night has fallen and Tim and the team are on alert. Well, I mean, there's been splashes and stuff, so. The boys have laid out nets in the hope of catching the elusive platypus. Tim is worried a harsh drought is taking its toll on the much loved Aussie icon, and he wants to make sure the plats in this river are healthy. Something's swimming there. Something swimming there right now. Suddenly, there's movement in the water. Once we catch a plat and the buoy's going up and down, there's no easy way of doing it. In the river we go, all of us. Scissors, lights, gloves. Yeah. Okay, keep an eye on the rest of that net, Nico. Got to get that plat out of the net quickly, above the water, and then bring it out. I mean, it's possible that a plat trapped underwater can drown. It's our first plat. It's a big female. Now, the first thing we check is always, are there spurs? Females don't have spurs. Look at that. Have you ever seen anything as beautiful as that? Hello. Okay, Nikki got a bag there, mate. 
The female now goes in a bag on some grass in a box. Now we do that because we can't get the data from her now and release her because we'll catch her over and over again. We don't want to put her through that. That's it, mate. Close it up. Now, do you want to just take her a couple of metres up there where she's nice and quiet? That's it. And we'll get ready. It's not long before the boys are back in the water and this plat is putting up a big fight. Should have him. Should have him. OK, one leg. That's it. I knew we'd get a big male. There's always one, a territorial male. As soon as you see it in the net, you can see it is massive. Look at this. How big is that? But how good is that to get something of this size, this age? This is a big male platypus. And those spurs right there are one of the most painful stings on earth. You take him, mate. You got him? You did yep. well out in the water there. Good. Yeah, got him? Good, good. Right, mate. One, two, three. In. Beauty. Let's go and sit down and wait for another one, hey? With two successful catches, the boys wait in anticipation for another platypus. But as the night draws on, Tim is growing increasingly concerned by the lack of movement in the river. He fears the drought has affected the platypus population. It's been a long time now and there's still no plats. But been around long enough to know that patience will normally pay off. But I'm getting nervous. Just gotta keep waiting, mate. Be patient, it'll happen. Got something? I'm not sure. No, maybe a fish. Maybe nothing. False. <laughs> False alarm. It's hard, isn't it? You just you want the net to go. We've been waiting a long time. This is not what I'd hoped for. I had hoped that we'd just get one, two, three, four, five plats in a row. After another silent hour, suddenly Mick spots something. Something in the net, guys. It's another plat and this feisty Aussie takes an instant dislike to rookie Mike. Oh! <laughs> now, female plats don't have the venomous spurs like the males, but they've got a trick up their sleeve I've never seen before, and that was she had an amount of poo in there that oh. when we caught her, <laughs> squirted right out in Mike's face. Oh. Good on you, darling. One of the more unpleasant things I've ever had to deal with. Yeah, I might just go get washed up. Something in the net, guys. Might be a plat. Before they have a chance to pull in the nets, there's some unanticipated action. Just when we thought that the night was over, we got another plat. Another male. Big male. He's heavy too. How's that bag, mate? Right in the bag? Yep, good on you, mate. Are the plats put up a fight. I mean, it's a little frightening for them, so they defend. And as soon as you put your hand near those spurs, they know it and they just rake backwards and incredibly strong. Just really got to be careful and that's, it's just safe to use gloves. Okay, you're nice and cosy there. We're gonna get you feeling a lot better, sweetness. At Sash, Lisa's worst fears are realised. Tiny tick victim Scout is in the oxygen chamber, fighting for his life. Scout's taken a turn for the worse. He's developed breathing problems. He's now in the oxygen cage, heavily sedated. I was hoping that it wouldn't go down this path, but it might just be a sign that we've caught him too late. All that Lisa can do now is hope and pray that Scout can find the strength to pull through. I'm just really upset that he got to this point. He's such a tiny little puppy, and now his life is really hanging in the balance. So the little is now, honey. It's a good boy. So the little is. Physical condition is um, beautiful. He's just great. Yeah. The next thing we've got to do is collect the data, establish how old they are, how much they weigh, and gain some measurements, just get a better understanding of the plats here. Way out west of Sydney, 
Tim has caught four platypuses. Lovely. That's what we wanted. A thorough health check will determine if the relentless drought is taking its toll on these delicate Aussie okay, icons. We're looking here for that the bend in the tail, yeah. and it's an indicator that's fat storage. Mm -hmm. So it's telling us um, what type of condition the plat's in. So, I mean, I don't think that the plat's necessarily too overweight. I mean, no. I'd probably give that a three and a half. It's a good score for this female platypus. A ranking of two or below would mean these unique animals may be struggling to survive. Total length. 450 to the dot. 45 centimetres. With the older female given the all clear, it's time to check the youngest catch. Yeah. She's calm. OK, 4'4", four, four, smaller than the last. Catching a juvenile is everything because it means that everything is moving forward. The next generation is here. We're pretty lucky to see you, aren't we? We're pretty lucky to see you. Now we've handled the girls, got a bit of practice. It's the gloves on, extra precautions. Look at that. I mean, the girls are cute, but that's pretty impressive, hey? Right, right. And let's sit him down, Mike, you on the tail? Yep. That's just a different feeling animal. Big, yeah. yeah? Yeah. Strong. Yeah. Okay. Now the thing to check for us is the spurs. Hey, there's venom on the end of that right. spur. This big boy, he's ready to unleash that venom. I look down at the spur and there's droplets of venom just seeping off the end. I, I think it's hard to say how old he is, perhaps five, six, perhaps nine, ten. I mean, we know that he's mature. I think we're going to have to leave it at that with him. Yeah, he's the king, though. He's the king. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> Four plats, all different ages and sizes. Main thing is they're all healthy. That's brilliant. We even got a young plat that says this whole system is ticking over. Now for the special part, letting them go. There you go, buddy. That was a good release, mate. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild plat. Yeah. Off you go, sweetheart. Mate. They're calm, hey? Yeah, they are. Yeah. They're all settled. She knows where she is. Okay, when you're ready, mate. How good's that? Oh, absolutely gorgeous. That was the big boy, hey? Yeah. Yeah. It's time for the final release. Although this grumpy girl gave Mike a hard time earlier in the night... Unbelievable. ..it seems that the rookie holds no grudges. That's your special little girl? That's my special little girl, yeah. Time to go. See you later. Uh, coming down here tonight and, and seeing the plats in the wild, I think, uh, is, has been beyond all of my expectations. I'm wrapped, I'm wrapped. It was just unreal. She knows where she is. That was a good night. Mate, that's, uh, that's got to be one of the highlights of my life, yeah, I reckon. Good. Same time next year? So, yeah, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. Chad, isn't it? Yes, it is. G'day, Chris. How, How are, are you, mate? Good to Very see well. you. Uh, got a good one for me today, huh? Uh, I've got an interesting one for you, yeah. A uh, death adder. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I heard. The following morning, Chris is at Featherdale Wildlife Park in Sydney's west. He's answering a call for help from the park's senior curator, Chad Staples. So we called Chris in today basically to help us solve a bit of a mystery. Fifi, our death adder, has a very obvious swelling in an interesting part of her body. Although you always hope for the best, I'm a little concerned about it. This is her, Fifi. Wow. She's either really let herself go or there's something <laughs> that's, that's going on. Death adders are renowned for being quite short and almost stumpy snakes. But the moment I look at her, I can tell straight away, yeah, there's a problem here. Has she been quite active or...? No, and I mean, you know what death adders are like. They, they're the, the lure hunter, mm. so she's not active, but she's off of food. Okay. And so the fact that she's still swollen was, like I said, a bit of an alarm bell for me because she loves her mice. How, how long since the last mouse? Three weeks. Okay. So a considerable amount of time. Like, she should have passed everything that she's had. Yeah. There are a few reasons to be worried, I guess, and, and certainly, 
if she is suffering some sort of indigestion or, or impaction, then, then it, it would explain it. Yep. The location of the swelling, it's, that's, I guess, a little bit interesting because it it's is... It's pretty high, it is isn't high. it? Yeah. And then that's not really where we'd expect to see mice that have stayed undigested. Yep. Honestly, my worst fear now with Fifi is that this swelling is some sort of blockage, whether it be digestive or some sort of gas. It's, it's concerning because of where it is and how big it is, and the fact that it really hasn't dissipated in the last three weeks when she also hasn't eaten. Fifi yeah. needs an urgent examination, but getting close to this snake is extremely dangerous. We're gonna have to get in there and have a look, aren't we? Absolutely. What are we talking about? What, the eighth most venomous snake in the world? Yep, she's definitely top 10, the death adders, yep. When this is the eighth most venomous snake, in the world with the fastest strike of any snake, you've got to be on your toes. Hey. <laughs> You're looking better. Hey, buddy. Who's feeling better? Yes, hello. At Sash, Little Scout has made an amazing recovery after being bitten by a deadly paralysis tick. As soon as I lay eyes on Little Scout, I can straight away see that his demeanour has completely changed. That little tail is wagging a thousand miles an hour. He wants to play and that's how a puppy should be. Oh, you're a cutie pie. I think you're feeling better. Yeah, not eating my finger. What about some real food? The final test in his recovery is to see whether or not he can eat. Wait, look what I've got. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Scout's doing so much better. He's full of energy and has now just eaten a full bowl of food with no problem. So I think he's ready to go home. No one is happier about the three-month-old's recovery than his anxious babysitter, Kathleen, who's waiting in reception with Scout's sister, Bella. When I heard the news, I just felt a wave of relief. This little beautiful thing is fine. He's young, he's three months old, he's full of vitality. Thank goodness. Let's go. Come on. Hi. <laughs> and you survived. You're okay. I can't believe it. was very it. close at one stage. Hey. I wouldn't know if he was going to even pull through. So. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was very worried. And here he is, himself. Even though Kathleen and the family are not their real owners, the thought of them losing Scout would have been absolutely terrifying. And they are so excited to have him back in their arms. Here we go. A happy couple. You guys ready to look after them? Especially this one. Now, you are a handful. You be good. Can you see? And be nice to your sister, please. The amazing thing here is that when Scout's owners left him to go overseas, he was healthy. And when they get home, he'll be healthy too. It's like none of this ever happened. Okay, push. Push. Okay, let's go home. Wow. See Take you later. Okay. Good luck. Bye. Bye. Oh, Here behind, she is. Behind, lock and, behind the lock and key, that's right. Chris is at the Featherdale Wildlife Park in Western Sydney. Oh, look, she knew you were coming. Fifi the Death Adder has developed a mystery swelling around her middle and now requires an examination. Chris is going to have to be really on his guard now that it's coming time to handle Fifi because she is very fast when she wants to be and, of course, in the top 10 most venomous snakes, so he's really going to have to be on his game. Handling a venomous snake, it's obviously incredibly risky, but we've got one thing in our favour here. It's a tube. Snakes will instinctively want to slither up the tube, so if we can use that, all of a sudden we turn things around in our favour. 
Well done. Perfect. It's always a nice moment <laughs> when, that's, when she's in there. With her head safely up that tube, I can now get a good feel of her. Hopefully we can get this examination done quickly and work out exactly what is going on. So I guess I'm, I'm looking for a few things. It, it's her withdrawing in pain and, yep. and really getting agitated by that, but also it's just the texture of it all. What I'm feeling, it doesn't feel like gas. It's kind of spongy, kind of soft, almost like it's a build-up of fluid. The location is really the critical thing here. If you think about it, you know, heart would be here, lungs in this first bit here, stomachs down the middle and then intestines. But you've got to remember she's a female. <laughs> That's right. So her reproductive tract is going to be sort of through this middle area here. Because she's either got some sort of impaction in a, in a lower part of her stomach or she has something filling up her reproductive tract, which you yep. would think would be a pregnancy. So the only way to, to truly know for sure is going to be to actually have a look inside there. Mm -hmm. Despite a lot of looking and a lot of prodding, to be honest, I'm no closer to working out what is actually happening here. So it's time to take this examination to the next level. Thankfully, these guys do have an ultrasound machine. So by using that, I should be able to get an answer as to what's happening. Okay, so I reckon we start around this, this middle area here. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting a bit of stomach here. Yep. But it's empty stomach. Yep. Which is hopefully a good sign. Just working our way down here. That area at the top of the screen there, yep. where we've got the little circle, that looks like a gallbladder and I think it's a liver around it. We still don't have anything that's causing this swelling yet. So far, we've found a liver, a gallbladder, but no answers as to what's going on here. Okay, so that area is moving. I'm pretty sure that is actually intestine there. Now, if we had a blockage there, that shouldn't be contracting. Okay. Chris is now certain that gas or a blockage isn't causing Fifi's problem. So we're going to have to keep on searching because right now we actually don't have any answers. Yep. See that? As Chris moves the probe over Fifi's belly, he notices something very unusual. Huh. Something in there is about half a centimetre wide but a couple of centimetres long with vertebrae. Finally, after all this searching, we've got an answer. Turns out it's answers. Mate, I think she's got babies. That would be fantastic because Fifi didn't breed last year and she was in a, a breeding program last year, so you do start to wonder if maybe she's too old now. Oh, that's, that's unreal. We don't just have babies, we've got live babies. <laughs> Which is the best kind. Yeah. So what about how many? Yeah, Any idea? I knew you'd ask that. <laughs> well, I need that now to better prepare, I mean. So they're venomous the day they're born, aren't they? From day dot, yep. As soon as they're out, they're ready to go. Wow. You've got, <laughs> I'd say at least 16, and, and I'd be thinking more like around 20. Well, I'm ecstatic to hear that Fifi's actually pregnant. You, you do worry that that swelling was going to be something nasty, but the fact that it means that she's got potentially 20 babies there that I've now got to prepare for, I'm over the moon. Considering what that swelling could have been. <laughs> Fantastic that's, outcome. That is a great outcome. And not just that, I mean, she's carrying them and carrying them very well. Yep. So Fifi, congratulations. Normally there's a kiss involved at this time, but I think we'll pass on that. Maybe not today. Normally a pregnancy ultrasound is an exciting time, and it's an emotional time, it's a happy time. But for Fifi, it's a time that she wants to be over. She'd just rather go back right now. It'll be another four weeks before Fifi's babies are born. She will spend her time resting in her enclosure until then. Good luck, girl. I think we're 20 on the way. You might just need it. Rest up. Hi. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.